What's going on, y'all? It's Rob with Cinema Bullies. It's been a been a while. Uh, life caught up. And, uh, a lot of things going on. Not too involved, you know, with dogs right at this moment. But I'm still watching. Um, still seeing things that are controversial and uh, misleading and false and typical hype you know bs of dogs that shouldn't be getting hype uh, same people you know with their opinions and riding each other's dicks and you know whatever else but you know i can't talk you know too much because i'm not in it like i was but i can say that from the outside looking in I see that the shows the hype everything seems to be dying down even lower than it was before I decided to take a step back um, I had an interesting conversation with someone from the Middle East um that mentioned that um, you know Bashar owns the ABKC um, that he bought it from Dave Wilson so I'm not sure how factual this is but I said somebody hit me up in my DMs um, from the Middle East I believe it was like Arabian Kennels or something <clears throat> and he told me you know apparently it's been a while and I'm assuming it's when the whole over-exaggerated extreme bulliness came back into the breed rather than the health and structure and getting them bully as you can the correct way. And uh makes sense, you know, because I got into it in 2015, 2016 is when I got my first bully. And I was late getting in, but, you know, I got one and I loved the dog and then I just looked into it, started showing and everything. But even from then, from 2015 to 2022, the quality and the overall look of the dog has changed drastically from 2015 to 2023. And, you know, that's only, you know, seven years, right? Or eight years. Eight years. So in eight years. We'll say seven, eight years, because I got it in 2015, 2016. So in that time, when I first got into the ring, um, I mentioned it before, I had my dog Komodo. Uh, he was all black male off of Derby City's a situation bred to a Dax daughter named Roxy. Um, and he was a nice pocket, lacked the bone and the crazy substance that these, a lot of these dogs have, even though he was lime bred. And he um, won all four of his shows. The first time I ever went in the puppy class, six to nine months. And he wasn't the bulliest. He wasn't biggest. He was a pocket. He was in with standards, XLs, and bigger pockets in the puppy class. And he was literally six months old on, like, the dot. I mean, he might have been, like, a week or two past six months. And he beat all the dogs, and he had good, pretty good structure. He had short hocks so that he lacked the angulation, which was his issue when he got older. And that's why I could never champ him out. And he also died young. But, um... Just from that experience to, you know, what I see now... I see dogs with, you know, great structure... Lose against dogs that are just over-exaggerated... With, you know, high-ass rears... Stretched all the way out so they look like they're flat. 
like their backs instead of having like the big you know matchbox ramp going on but then as soon as they start walking or take a step forward then you see their true stance and it's like this so you know and then you got dogs that are more correct when they're stacked they, they look perfect and then when they take a step they might have a slight you know rear difference or they might have none um but they lack the over exaggerated substance and features so they automatically get second or third because if the dogs are more bullier no matter how fucked up they are they win or if they can't even walk around the fucking ring which is ridiculous like if the dog can't do a lap around the ring the dog shouldn't be in the ring so that being said like i said it makes sense that you know bashar probably did by abkc mm -hmm. implemented the more extreme bullier look because that's his style of dog which like i said i've talked to bashar i like bashar I like his mindset. You know, he did it before everyone else. He was ahead of the curve, ahead of the game. And he, you know, profited well off of what he did. And what he's doing, still. But, now it does, like I said, it makes sense that those bullier, more extreme dogs win now. No matter what. I mean, every dog that I see usually winning for the most part is usually a very done up extreme dog with nowhere near perfect structure or not even, not even not even close to even okay structure actually i should say and then you know you have um what's that one dog that black dog um the fuck's his name i think he's i think he's in number one right now in the abkc standings um what the fuck i forgot his name but he's all all black and i think he's a little white on him grand champion um even him he's he's not as bully as a lot of these dogs that are winning shows but he's number one because he's bully enough and his structure is almost you know perfect or you know close to so um and that's the type of dog that should be winning um even if there's a flaw, I mean, all dogs have some type of flaw. Your high rear, you know, gay tail, you know, a wrong eye set, underbite, longer muzzle, you know, easty westy, uh, the shoulder set's wrong, uh, lack angulation. <clears throat> all those things are different variables that a judge can penalize you for. Um, you know the gate's not correct and you know so forth and so forth uh, the turn on stifle um but and i said now it, it really does make sense and now that i know that or i was told that from an outside source that is you know from the middle east which i mean that's where bashar's i guess family's from he's middle some type of middle eastern and now that does make sense <clears throat> so i'm curious if it's true i mean i don't think they'll ever admit to it but i mean it makes sense and i think a lot of people that watch this video are going to agree that it does make sense because like the extreme look didn't really win back then like from old videos that i watched yeah they were bully but the whole extreme, over-the-top, you know, fucked-up rears didn't win. Um, you know, they got long, um, I guess it would be like their femurs. Like, because that's too much of the bulldog in them. On that short frame. So, you know, personally, I like the old-school, you know, old-school style bullies more. Um, that still had bone and muscle and nice shaped head, boxed head, you know, short muzzle. But, you know, it comes down to the preference of what you really want in a dog. I mean, do you want a hype dog that's going to live to be about five or six? Or do you want a dog companion that you are going to have as a family member? And, you know, people 
I think are starting to understand that because, you know, I see all these extreme dogs, you know, usually dying before the age of, you know, five. So, you know, it don't make sense. The life expectancy of these dogs should be about 10 to 12 easily. You know, some I know make it later, like, you know, 15 years old. <clears throat> so, it doesn't make sense. And rushing the process and just copying everybody's things isn't how you do it. You got to start from the beginning like I did. Went back fucking 10 generations because I went back to a dog that was born in, I think, uh, 2010, 2011, which was um, Outcross Bullies Matrix, my boy Matt Zimmerman owned. And he shared similar blood that I had from Power Play Bullies because it was all Stax blood for the most part. So I brought that into the newer style and then I got the older style and then I brought my boy Winston or Obsidian, which is old school muscle tone blood because he has Magoo uh, three times, Casablanca is his grandfather. And I brought that into the Stax blood, the old school stuff. And I have to say, those puppies, they're 10 months now. I, I posted a picture of the male. He'll probably be in my cover photo for this video. And he's 10 months. He's very structurally clean, short back, nice muscle, decent bone, beautiful shaped head, clean bite. He would probably champ out in one show if I brought him to a show as an adult. Because um, he's still a pup. Anyway, he's about think, around 60 pounds and he's 10 months old. Uh, flawless, you know, his uh, stride and everything, his, his movement's great. And he has a good personality. I mean, it, it, bringing the old school stuff back into the new school, I think is definitely a way to go. And then you make your tweaks along the way. Because if you keep copying everybody's stuff and you wonder why your dogs don't live past five, it's because whatever they did, with the dogs they created, something in there is not right. Something's fucked up the way they bred it. They added something they shouldn't have. You know, some of these bully breeders, you know, have bulldogs at their houses. So you don't think they mess around and hang papers and breed some bulldog shit to their, to their American bullies? They definitely do. And like I said, it explains all the defects, all the skin defects, all the fucking allergies the fucked up eyes like when they get like the um, cysts or the bigger eyelids and shit um you know the underbite is more prominent when you know they got a lot of bulldog um you know the long ass femurs that's all it's uh, it just it all links back to the too much of the bulldog not enough bully in it but they tweaked it enough where the dog looks bully has the bone has the size has the weight the big blocky head but then where they're stuck at and they can't figure out how to get rid of it is the long ass femurs that make the rear and the straight stifles that they can't get rid of so you know i'm not saying that the way i did it is gonna work for you but i definitely think going back you know 10 years Plus, if you find a male that's old, that, you know, 9, 10 years old, that's still got some semen kicking, I would take your new style bitch to something like that and see what happens. And I bet you, you probably will have some puppies that are great, some that aren't so great, but the ones that are great are the ones that you move forward with. And then you either take that to some old school stuff too, or you take it to another newer style dog. But I still wouldn't jump right into some newer style of dog that's, you know, five times Rocco or, you know, five times Grim or, you know, five times Brim or fucking, you know, Muscle Tones, Nemesis, whatever the case is. I wouldn't breed into something that is line bred multiple generations like that. I would take it back further or to a dog that's just not as line bred but has those dogs or a dog of that muscle tone blood or, you know, uh, Fo King or whatever you want to say, uh, his blood 
in there and then take that and then run it back to your old school slash new school style dog and then go from there and then see what comes out of that it's all a process everyone wants to rush it thinking that they're going to be the next you know Bashar or the next Khan or the next you know whoever I don't, I don't know who's really popular right now so I, I could care less but um it's all a process it all takes time and I think you guys will agree with me um of what I just spoke on and if not you know drop comments below tell me what you think you know um like I said I got the messages in my dm from the guy that just randomly hit me up so um and I don't ask I don't I don't even search for this shit people decide to hit me up 